Hey guys, we're here today at Hard Racing working on our new 2017 Grom SF project bike. And in this video, we're going to do a comparison between the Grom SF and the regular Grom, also known as MSX125. Just a little uh, update for you guys that aren't familiar with the year designations. Basically, the Grom MSX125 was released in 2013, everywhere else except for the United States. Then in 2014, we got them. So 2014 through 2015 were the Grom. And then 2016, they had late models, leftover 15s that they called the Grom. But everywhere else in the world, it became the SF. So now, in the latter part of 2016, we've now got the newly released 2017 Grom SF. So that doesn't make it confusing enough. Basically, in most places in the world, the 2016 became the SF, where in the US it was still the traditional Grom. So for this video, we're going to basically refer to it as the Grom and the SF. That'll keep it simple and easy. But now we're going to show you the comparison differences between the two. The obvious first one being the bodywork. The shapes are totally different this year. A lot more angled. Definitely looks really, really cool. The front fender, slightly new shapes, got the vent in it. The headlight, LEDs, top and bottom, a lot brighter than previous years. It's very impressive. We'll show that to you in a minute what they look like on. As you can see the panel is totally different. The seat is different. It's got a much more contoured cutout now of it. Different shape to fit the tail section which is different. Under the back, the tail light itself still the same the rear hugger is slightly different obviously the exhaust used to come through here and now it's down here and of course you notice the big red calipers they colored them red this year same calipers just painted same brakes same swing arm Obviously, the next biggest difference is the exhaust. Obviously, the back still comes out a little bit, but most of it stays underneath. So they redesigned the rear sets to have a hanger here. The mounts look to be the same, but actually the rear set design is slightly different. Still the same cast aluminum as last year's. But again, the mount is different here versus the stock regular Grom. Engine, same as the traditional Grom. Fuel injection, everything else is still the same. The tires are now IRC, at least they are on ours. We have heard some people still getting V-rubbers. I'm not sure if that depends on where you are in the country or where you are in the world. But these came with IRCs, which are supposed to be a little bit better than the v the V rubber which is as everyone knows about as bad as it gets shock is slightly different a little shorter but good news is the only shock we're confident will work we'll have videos of those coming up so they did change the suspension a little bit and the forks are a little different inside but again, we know that the Olin's fork cartridge can fit in these, so we will go over videos of those. As you can see now, they have an aluminum cap, no more plastic tops like they used to be. The rod inside is threaded. It's not a C-clip, but it's, again, we'll go over those in future videos. But right now, we're just showing you the main differences between the bikes. And again, as you can see, just a lot more aggressive, in our opinion, a lot better looking body panels than the original, which still 
wasn't too bad, but not quite as nice. Obviously they are is not quite stock, far from it, but at least you get the idea. And some of the other new changes to the bike, the dash is now blue. Last year's was an amber color, now it's blue. I'll show you that now here. Also a new switchblade style key kind of cool definitely needs to be color matched to your bike in our opinion so this will become white soon enough but that is definitely a neat little upgrade and there's your new dash another huge huge upgrade if you are a Grom owner you know how crappy this gas cap is when you go to the gas station you gotta find somewhere to put it on top of the tank on the floor on the ground somewhere well they heard our complaining and went like every other gas cap in the world and have a flip up lid that is definitely a huge upgrade unfortunately it does not just bolt on to the old one but that is definitely a nice upgrade that Honda was smart enough to change after the original ground now we'll show you what it looks like underneath the seat same key lock turn like the original one obviously just a little bit cleaner look so as you can see very similar to the previous Grom as far as the subframe is concerned but the bodywork and the panels have been relocated got a cover here got a big hole here where traditionally the battery was all the way forward and then you'd have a whole space back here but it was really really shallow now you've got a huge hole that you can nicely fit your power commander, your wallet, your wideband, whatever other stuff you want to put in here. That's kind of cool. Unless having to jam it into this area here or shove it on top of your battery. Same wiring, same plugs. And unfortunately, same little crap battery that they had previously, which we'll be getting removed very quickly for a much more powerful anti-gravity lithium battery so that we don't ever get stuck stranded. Same service plug. So again, most of the electronics and everything else are very similar or the same same controls same bars same clamps and we'll show you the best just the headlights Super bright LEDs, low beam, and a high beam on together, and then just low beam now. It's hard to see because of the iris of the lens, but basically you have LEDs up there that reflect down and then shoot out, and you got a nice trick looking LED running light there. Very cool. Honda did a great job of that because the stock headlight on the traditional Grom is crap. Total crap. So this is a huge improvement. Definitely. They heard the complaints. They took the feedback. And then they made it better. So there you have it. The new 2017 Grom SF. New bodywork new LED headlights, new flip-up gas cap, new switchblade key, slightly reworked forks, 
slightly changed shock, new rear sets to accommodate the under engine exhaust, new colors on the calipers, IRC tires, and slightly new bodywork again, front fender slightly tweaked. And for the most part, that is it. That is your changes, your your differences. And we will have many, many videos coming up showing a lot more of the upgrades you can do specific from the SF. And we will also have comparisons on what works, what doesn't, um, between the two bikes, what fits up, what can be made to fit, what can retrofit from one bike to the other, exhausts and all that good stuff. So if you enjoyed our video, please give a thumbs up on the bottom. And of course, be sure to subscribe. We really appreciate you guys subscribing to our channels. Get notified for up and coming videos. And if you have any other questions, comments, please check us out at hardracing.com. And we're also on Instagram, Facebook, forums, and Twitter.